Well, way back in May of 1966, the Braves played the first ever game here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. And on a steamy Sunday in St. Louis, today the Atlanta Braves and St. Louis Cardinals will meet for the final time in regular season play here at Bush. It's game three of a three-game series, the Braves and the St. Louis Cardinals. Good afternoon, everybody, along with Don Sutton, Chip Carey. Great to be back at the ballpark. The Braves, as you know, yesterday even up this series had a game apiece. A huge day for Andrew Jones. A couple of home runs, five RBIs, and a grand slam home run. Braves with a win today have a chance to come back to Atlanta with a four and two road trip. As you know, Atlanta still continues to set the pace in the National League's Eastern Division, leading by a whopping five and a half games. Intriguing pitching matchup today. Jorge Sosa and Chris Carpenter will hook up. And on the other side of a break, my partner Don Sutton will be standing by with a man partially responsible for the hitting success of Andrew Jones. That's Braves hitting coach Terry Pendleton. That conversation comes your way right after this timeout. Welcome back to St. Louis. It's the Braves' final game in this old ballpark, the number one version of Bush Stadium. Next year, a new one here. My guest is Terry Pendleton, and Terry had a lot of memorable days here. But I would guess one you will always remember is a little ride you took yesterday to pull down one of the numbers. Oh, no doubt. I was hoping I didn't fall off that, that back of that uh, car there. But no, that was a great, uh, great honor. You know, there are a lot of uh, great ball players that have played in this stadium and had the opportunity to put on the Cardinal uniform and just, just have the opportunity to play here. And uh, for me, that was a great honor for them to even ask me to do so. Pretty impressive gentleman who did a lot of path paving for all of us that you got to ride out there with, too. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. You can't say enough about Buck. You know, I got an opportunity to meet Buck, uh, Buck O'Neill in uh, Kansas City in 98 when I played there, and he, he frequent the ballpark, so I got an opportunity to sit around and talk with him a lot. And I'll tell you what, there is a lot of history. Boy, there's stuff you, you, you talk to him for three hours, and <laughs> the first hour you remember stuff. After that, he, he starts into other uh, things that you really have to go back and think, wow, what a great opportunity I got, uh, you know, playing the, the game of Major League Baseball. You put together a good career. You got an MVP trophy that you have at home, then becoming a hitting coach. At what stage did you decide, I want to work with hitters? Well, the third or fourth phone call John Sherrill <laughs> made to me. I really hadn't decided that. Uh, I, I really, I, I went home and I was home for a couple of years and uh, Greg McMichael and I and Mark Lemke decided to, to put a little hitting uh, baseball school together to help the kids out in the community and just try to give back a little bit. And then uh, um, a few months after that, John Sherrill called and said, listen, we'd like for you to take this job. I said no a couple of times. He called, he said, take a month and I'm calling you back and we're going to get this thing together this job is perfect for you and I said no and he got on the phone with my wife and she said it's up to him and well to make a long story short I'm here now but it took a few uh, times of talking I see he went to the pre CEO of the family though that's good <laughs> you mentioned youngsters in there and working with young players there's a wonderful group of young kids that have been handed to you this year a lot of fun or a big challenge it's a lot of fun and uh, and I wouldn't say a big challenge a challenge at times uh, the fun is the fact that these kids love to play the game. First of all, I want to give our minor league, our, our, our scout, scouts, our minor league director, our, our coaches down there, all of those guys have given us an opportunity to make our jobs easier up here because of the work they've done with these kids, uh, the scouting that they do with them. They're great kids. They come to the ballpark. They love to work. They love to get better. They love to beat on the other team. But they've made my job easier in the fact that they're young kids who love to play the game and who want to learn and get better. How do you work, uh, what do you work off of? You, you have to have a starting point when you get these youngsters in the 15 or 20 seconds we have left. What do you work off of when you first see them? I give them an opportunity to do their thing. I just watch what they do. I give them an opportunity to do their thing. A Jeff Francoeur, for example, is coming here. I haven't tried to change a thing. Why? You know, he's doing his thing now. If he, if he doesn't have success for a while, then we'll go and find out why he's not having that success and try to take what they've got and make better, not what I know, what they've got and make better. Well, we all think you're doing a great job, and we, like you, are smiling with these youngsters. <laughs> That's Terry Pendleton, final game of the series from St. Louis, right after this. Not a scorcher here, but sunglasses are the order of the day in St. Louis as the Braves wrap up this road trip. Let's get right to our Southeast Toyota starting lineup. Raphael Percal will lead it off. Kelly Johnson in the two spot, followed by Marcus Giles. Through the heart of the order, Andrew Jones, Adam Marosha, and Jeff Brancour with Brian McCann, Wilson Bediment, and Jorge Sosa completing Bobby Cox's nine. The Cardinal defense, a familiar look in the outfield with Rodriguez and Edmonds. Taguchi getting the start and right. Pujols and Nunez at the corners. 
Their reliable double play combination of Eckstein and Grzelanik up the middle. Mike Mahoney behind the plate and arguably the best pitcher in the National League on the mound today. His 23rd start, excellent record, marvelous ERA, 8-0 in his last nine starts. That's Chris Carpenter. Umpires after a couple of pitches. Which the first is called a strike by Dan Iasagna, the home plate umpire tonight. I Sonia the umpire Dale Scott at first Tim Sheeta second Ron Culpa with Scott being the head of the crew. There's a look at Dan. And there's a look at Carpenter who's got a big curveball and he shows that off and quickly for call down nothing and two. That one stopped by Mahoney behind the plate. This series started down with John Smoltz coming to St. Louis with an eight game unbeaten streak. Maybe Atlanta can return the favor to Carpenter who's been rolling. Albert Pujols got things going for St. Louis on Friday night. Well, Andrew Jones yesterday two home runs. Well if the Braves are going to do it against Carpenter they're going to need some of the same things to happen that the Cardinals did. John Smoltz and I had a conversation yesterday about the game. Swing and a miss. One hitter up, one struck out by Carpenter. And John asked me, said, that, did you ever have a game in where you threw a couple of pitches and right in the middle of your delivery, you had no idea what was going to happen? I said, John, I have about 250 wins to, I mean, 250 losses to prove I threw a lot of those. But John said in that ball game, it was odd for him. He had a couple of pitches with irregularities in the baseball where when he turned it loose, he didn't know where it was going. Both were home runs. So Kelly Johnson hits with the bases clear. Kelly hitting second, playing left field, and takes the ball inside. That's got to be a, an awfully uncomfortable feeling for a man on the mound. Yeah, it, it is because you keep what you yell, come back, but it's too late. The ball won't listen when you turn it loose. Or if it does come back, it's about 75 miles an hour faster than when you let it go, right? It, it, that's exactly right. That brings up another issue, and I, I have heard it from, I guarantee you, 15 or 20 pitchers in the National League this year. Baseballs have more irregularities in them this year than any other year in memory. Hmm. Any theories as to why that? And I, I asked John that. See, you know, I get, I, we get a ball in the booth about what twice a year. That's the only time I pick one up. So I, I can't tell you what it is. Well, you remember during the Homer Happy late 90s, everyone complained that the baseballs were like super balls, hard as a rock. The seams were. They were Titleist Pro yeah, V1s. Yeah, is yeah, what they yeah, were. And, and, now you're saying that the ball feels different. 2-2, two -two, way upstairs to Kelly, full count. John says some of them were so hard that it's hard to control. He said some feel like they are more egg-shaped, uh, just that there there is not the consistency that you expect. Roller hit to the right side and foul at first. Now, as a pitcher, you, you you rely on that, don't you? I mean, yeah. obviously, you go out there with your stuff and your repertoire and your game plan, but if you're not throwing a, a uniformly shaped or seamed baseball. No, you, you're, you're counting on sameness. You're counting on repeating your delivery. That's out of play to the left side. You're counting on repeating your delivery, but you're also counting on repeating your delivery and propelling the ball to the plate, having that ball react the same way every time, the way you expect it to. So I mean it was uh, it was an odd conversation to hear John say man they're all different. Swung on belted center field deep long run Edmonds he'll turn and that's way out of here. Kelly Johnson hits his eighth and that was a bomb. He doesn't give up many does Carpenter I believe that's the tenth of the year. But Kelly Johnson, when he is in a groove, can deliver him a long way. You hit one out here in center, you earn it. Fastball out away from him. I'm not surprised that early in the ball game, Carpenter would say, okay, it's 3-2, put it in play, big boy. More often than not, you'll get it out on that. Here's Marcus Giles, and he takes upstairs. You're right about Carpenter, Don. He'd rather let you hit it. Then walk you just 37 bases on balls for Carpenter all year and 163 innings pitched. Well, the theory is it takes a lot of solo homers to beat you. Brave strike first in the first, and Giles ahead with a 2 0 count. Marcus carries an 11 game hitting streak into the series wrap up today, and that one out of play to the right. Yeah, we wanted to uh, talk to him about that today, but he had an awfully busy morning and. Uh, 
didn't have the time for us to sit down and talk because that's pretty impressive Steve. Getting third today still no Chipper Jones for Atlanta Chipper not in the lineup and most difficulty he says not so much in swinging the bat from the left side but swinging it right handed and throwing across the diamond in fact the published reports in Atlanta if you didn't see that around the southeast there is a shot they may have to disable Chipper Jones popped up shallow right so Taguchi will gallop over a couple of steps and there is out number two Again, if Chipper doesn't play today they'll check him out after the game today an off day in Atlanta tomorrow Braves don't play until Tuesday night against the Giants one would imagine Don any decision on Chipper Jones medical future would be made at that time and they could retroactively disable him which would mean Chipper best case scenario could be back at some point toward the end of the upcoming homestand well that's I, still to be determined I hate, I think you hate to go into a series or a homestand like that a, a man short on the roster which effectively you are mm -hmm. if the only thing he can do is maybe pinch it inside to Andrew Jones he is first in the league 35 home runs not a certainty but one other possibility you might see too is John Smoltz backed up a day uh, it's, you know he's thrown quite a few innings more than he has in a long time Braves with a lead why not take this time now to give him a little rest well if he doesn't take the extra day that sets up a great pitching match of Thursday night John Smoltz and Jason Schmidt that's Hello. if John pitches on his regular turn if not he could pitch Friday in the opener against the Arizona Diamondbacks 3 0 count to Andrew and he takes a strike. Three and one the count what the Braves have done and Bobby Cox has done in the past is let him let the uh, the first four starters go on the fifth calendar day. That stays high. So how about this Carpenter with a very odd first inning. He wants to know where that pitch was. It was up. So a homer and a walk from Carpenter in the first inning. Fifth calendar day for Smoltz. He pitched Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday would be his regular turn. And I think probably what we're talking about is that extra day instead of giving him on the fifth calendar day give him on the fifth start date that would put that match up you're talking about in place. And as we look at the Braves game notes no starter listed for Thursday against Jason Schmidt yet first pitch swinging LaRoche that's skied into left center field and Rodriguez is under he's got it and that retires the side but Kelly Johnson hits a solo homer for Atlanta after a half inning it's one nothing Braves. Enemy territory, it's the Sea of Red rooting for their Cardinals, managed by Tony La Russa, and here's his batting order. Eckstein, a terrific leadoff hitter, will be followed by Rodriguez and then Pujols. Edmonds, Grizzolonic, and Nunez, three very good ones in the middle. Sotaguchi, Mike Mahoney, and Chris Carpenter will complete the nine. Defensively, good outfield for the Braves of Johnson Jones and Frank Coor. Good infield, too. Betamet per call left side, Giles LaRoche right side. Brian McCann behind the plate. And a guy who would get some MVP votes if I had him for the Braves. You're looking at Jorge Sosa. Five and one since being pressed into being an emergency starter. Braves have won nine of his ten starts. Excellent ERA when he has been in the starting role. Cardinals made Tim Hudson work in the first inning yesterday. But Tim had excellent stuff as he picked up his 100th Major League win. Let's see if Sosa can pitch to some contact here against this Cardinal club and take this game deep on a muggy Sunday afternoon. He falls behind Eckstein 2 and 0 however in the bottom of the first inning. Keep an eye on Jorge Sosa. He hasn't done it very much but if his arm slot goes lower than high three quarters and is in and out of uh, coming out of that slot right there that's when he seems to miss up and away to left handers and, and up and into right handers. Eckstein a real good leadoff man four homers 39 driven in. And a 269 batting average, but what makes him so tough is he rarely swings and misses. He will take a walk. And he puts the ball in play. And the name of the game for the Cardinals, get men on in front of Albert Pujols. And that's a full count, three balls, two strikes. What was the note we were reading? He has swung and missed 4% of the time. Something like that. 38, 39 pitches. That's it. So a tough man to whiff. And he takes ball four low leadoff man on for the Cardinals the next time. Here's John Rodriguez. The left fielder called up from the minor leagues when Reggie Sanders got hurt. And Rodriguez has been off to a good start and you figure he would maybe the second best place in the National League to hit 
first being in front of Barry Bonds, the second in front of Albert Pujols, oh, which is yeah. where Rodriguez is. Hitter's delight. They were telling me that he had a month down at AAA where he had four grand slams. A month. Not bad. Rodriguez, not a young player, but by major league standards, a rookie. He's been in the Yankees and the Indians farm systems, now getting a chance as he approaches 30 years of age to play in the big leagues with the Cardinals. Line in a right field. That'll drop in front of Frank Poor. First and second with nobody out. Rodriguez, a six-game hit streak. And here comes the big boy, Albert Pools. Rodriguez reminds a lot of folks around here of Ray Langford, the way that he used to lay the bat on his shoulder, and the same aggressive approach to hitting. And you, you leave him a fastball in the strike zone. He doesn't miss it. Same story with this guy, Albert Pujols, first man in history of baseball with 30 or more homers in his first five major league seasons. He got number 30 here on Friday night against John Smoltz. Braves looking for a double play off the bat of Pujols. He's hitting to 11 of them this year. And a little bit low, one ball, no strikes. How would you pitch to Albert Pujols? With fear and dread. Reluctantly, I think I would try to lengthen the ballpark, try to keep the ball out away from him as much as possible down in the strike zone. If he's going to hit it out, let him hit it out the other way and try to get him to hit it on the ground. Slider in when I was ahead in the count. But you'd better get it in on the knuckles because he's strong enough to yank it down that 330-foot oh, yeah. line to left. I don't think I would ever try to throw him a strike inside. If it's inside, it would be right at the belt buckle for effect and go right back out away from it. And what you're seeing from Sosa is pretty much what we've seen all year. This is a guy that pitches with men on base virtually every inning as a starter. So he does walk a real tightrope on that mound. 2-0 pitch. Good curveball. Pujols wasn't expecting that. Wisely, he took it. He's still ahead in the count. A lot of hitters would have got themselves out on a pitcher's pitch. A hitter's count, but a pitcher's pitch. One of the things that makes Pujols so difficult, okay, he'll spot you that one. That's not my pitch. I'm not going to swing. Great discipline. Ball three. Edmonds waiting on deck. I said before I'd like to see Sosa pitch more to contact he throws a lot of pitches gets deep in counts before the resolution of that confrontation is settled the whole ball game may hinge on this pitch right here it's a little early to yep. say that I know but this could set the tone for the whole ball game three and one your count nobody out for the Cardinals Giles standing behind the second base bag and Sosa steps off to think about it. I really don't like to see an infielder do that in a count three and one with the league's best hitter up there. It's a distraction I don't think you need. Popped him up. In foul ground, McCann. One man out. What a pitch from Sosa. And we'll see if indeed that does set the tone for this ball game. Now you've got Edmonds up who has yet to hit into a double play all year though. Down in the strike zone. A little bit in on him. He caught it in on the barrel of the bat. See where that contact is? Right around the label. And this is a good play by Brian McCann. He's looking right up into the sun. Stayed under it, stayed steady, waited till he spotted the ball, then fired the mask out of his way. Wilson Bedebit, I give him credit, was coming in a hurry trying to take that, but gave way to McCann when he saw how comfortably he was camped under it. A double play gets you out of the first still with the lead, but you've got Edmonds, who in 319 at-bats has yet to be doubled up. Braves came close to getting him yesterday, but he beat the play at first. 21 homers for Edmonds. And a slider strike. 
He has yet to ground into a double play, but he hit into a weird double play yesterday. It was a, actually a 4-6-3 double play, a looper back a second that Pujols thought was mm -hmm. going to fall. He took off running. Giles got it, flipped to uh, for call who was in a better angle to throw, and they doubled up Pujols at first. 0-1, oh, the count to Edmonds. Skied out of play, foul, 0-2. Oh, they were talking on the broadcast yesterday about a change in Edmonds' batting stance. Have you noticed anything differently about the way Edmonds is approaching the pitched ball at this point? Yeah, I really have it. He looks like uh, whatever he's doing, I can see a little different result because he seems to be handling pitchers up in the strike mm -hmm. zone better than he did before. He's always been an uppercut hitter, but he's skied a lot of those balls. Now he's getting some distance on those pitches at the top of the strike zone. 0-2 oh, with two on. He laid off. Yeah, the book on Edmonds always was with two strikes. If you look at that Cardinal jersey, see that yellow bat? It's almost like an arrow for the pitcher. That's exactly the trajectory you'd want that pitch to take as he took his stride in the batter's box. See it right there? That's where the fastball would go to get it. And right about there. Pop it straight up. Let's see if it happens here on a 1-2 count. one nothing Braves on a Kelly Johnson homer. Good stop. I've had a couple of scouts tell me in the last week flitting from topic to topic. And they would say, you know the one guy I'd like to trade for on your club? Well, you, that gives you, that opens up a multitude of answers. Mm -hmm. Brian McCann is the guy who said, boy, we'd love to have him catching our staff. That's pretty high praise for a youngster of his age. 2-2 Two -two pitch to Edmonds. Breaking ball, bouncing ball. Giles knocks it down, saves a run. Two outs. Second and third for Mark Grudzelanek, who had a two-out hit yesterday for St. Louis. But Giles got a good jump to retire Edmonds. All you're thinking here is knock it down, smother it, because it does save a run. And not only that, it saved a first and third situation. So here's Grudzelanek. He's hot. Nine-game hit streak for him. Always a dangerous two-out hitter, and much like Marcus Giles, a guy that loves to wear out right and right center. Be careful with this man. Second and third, two outs and a long first. McCann's got to be on his toes. A wild pitch would score Eckstein here. Kozelanek is up to 295 with runners on base. About that number with runners in scoring position. Very good career has had Mark Kozelanek. Again, as a shortstop, now plays second base. It's one of those guys that seems like he's always been in the shadow of someone. You know, he's the guy that would get best supporting actor, but would never get best actor. One ball, one strike. Probably because his name's too hard to spell. That's the big problem. <laughs> Little fly ball, shallow left. Kelly Johnson is there, and Sosa does it again. Two on, nobody out, and he leads by a run after one. Well, as Glenn Diamond, our fine producer, says, Jorge Houdini has done it again. Two on, nobody out in the first. He escapes the opening frame with a one-run lead, and Jeff Francoeur is coming up, and he jumps on the first pitch, and he hits a rocket out of the ballpark to left. Jeff Francoeur, a line drive home run. It's two to nothing. There was a writer talking to Bobby Cox at his office on Friday night. Said, "Do you think anybody? You think he'll ever walk Francoeur? Do you think anybody will ever not throw one in the strike zone?" Bobby put one finger to his lips and said. Apparently, word hasn't got around that this kid can hit it in the strike zone, and he can hit it if it's near the strike zone. If you're a pitcher now, when you get the scouting report, you've got to figure which batter's box you want to take out of play. I was just going to say, he's like Vladimir Guerrero. Yeah. That's a good comparison. What a start for Fran Coor. 2-0 Atlanta, and Brian McCann rolls it foul. You know, we, we've talked about these kids so much, and... They've earned it. They are the best collection of youngsters. 
my 40th year in the big leagues the best collection of youngsters I've ever seen come to the big leagues hey one other Frank Coors story Jeff Frank Coors went to our uh, media relations director Brad Hange <laughs> after he got beat up he goes to Brad and said is there a chance that sometime on the road you and I could have lunch I want you to brief me and to counsel me on dealing with media. McCann pops that toward third. Abraham Nunez is under. And he'll make the play for out number one. That's something How about that. I, it's number one, very smart on his part. Number two, I, I think it's something that I think Major League Baseball could do a much better job of. I know that the NBA has a rookie seminar to help educate the kids. I don't know. If they do that for the first round draft picks or youngsters who come up to Major League Baseball, but that's something I think our sport, it's certainly Brad. the writers and the broadcasters, would appreciate. As you look at Brad Hange and Travis Haney, one of the Braves beat writers. Mr. Haney. But I thought that was so impressive that, you know, here's a guy who'd been in the big leagues for three weeks, four weeks. We said, okay, you know, things are going pretty well. How do I? not mishandle it. Wilson Benavent takes a high strike count evens to him. That give you a one. list of reasons why these guys are so good. One they are passionate about the game. Number mm -hmm. two they're respectful of their elders on the ball club. Which is just about everybody because yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, they uh, they know the history of what the Braves have accomplished. One of them has even said and told me they're not going to this streak is not going to stop on our ship. The streak of 13 consecutive years of winning. But when they cross that white line, to paraphrase my granddaddy, they ain't as scared of nobody. No, and, and that's the other intriguing thing about this team. There are a lot of folks who believe that this Braves club is more dangerous than any other that has come down the pike in a while because the rest of baseball doesn't really know how to pitch to or face the youngsters that they have on the bench in the lineup and in that rotation the unanswered question is and we won't know until September comes if the Braves find themselves in a three game two game separation between first and second how will those youngsters react that oh. hits a line drive over second he's a rookie too and he's got a hit that's three of them for Atlanta already See, he's not even mentioned in that group though because he started mm -hmm. the year here and he's he's had uh, a chance to be up here a couple of times before but he's another one that gets left out of a marvelous group of young players. They are fun for us to be around. Obviously, where we sit, they're fun to watch play. They're fun for Terry Pendleton. I love what he had to say to do today. I think that was a, a great statement, and every coach should listen to that. We're going to find out what they can do, then I'll, wa I'll watch for a while. Yeah, a lot of times a coach will try to enforce what he thinks a player sure. should do on them rather than let the player succeed or fail and then come in for some some tune up work. Unfortunately I think when kids come up like that that are good we want to double deck the bandwagon so we can climb on and feel like we have to have some input. Part of it is just continuing to encourage them. They must have been doing something well to get here. That's what I always said about Phil Jackson. A lot of his detractors said well let's see him coach the Los Angeles Clippers to a championship. I think it's probably more difficult to coach a talented group of players because of the risk of messing it up. Sosa can't lay down the bunt. He pops out to Pujols who came charging on. Not what Jorge was looking for in that situation, but Braves inning continues with Rafael for call. Rafael struck out his first time up. You agree with that philosophy? Yeah, I think so. I, I because I think there is there is a, maybe it's an internal pressure to say or do something by virtue of the job title. Well, my name is coach or manage. I got to be coaching or managing it. Mm -hmm. and, and a great part of that is watching and observing, not trying to force changes or really. I think uh, there are a lot of times when youngsters come up and they get information overload. They get confused at Chuck Daly great NBA basketball coach analyst on TNT for their NBA coverage from time to time used to always say the art of coaching is pretty simple you keep the five guys who aren't playing away from the seven guys who are <laughs> that's good and of course he wrote that to the Hall of Fame two to nothing Atlanta 2 0 count two for call that at first and he lashes that out of play two and one count now 
There is a great left-handed pitcher who played with the Dodgers that everybody knows. His name Sandy Koufax, the best pitcher I ever saw. When I first got to the big leagues, he said, I need a minute of your time. He said, listen to what everybody says. That's the polite thing to do. Pull out what makes you better. That's the smart thing to do. Little roller that Carpenter fields and takes care of. Braves get another home run. Jeff Francoura line drive over the boards in left. Atlanta by a pair. It's 2 0 Atlanta rubber game of this three game series in St. Louis. Braves are playing long ball with a man that's trying to win the Cy Young Award for the Cardinals. That's right hander Chris Carpenter here in the second. Abraham Nunez, So Taguchi, and Mike Mahoney are coming up. As Jeff Francoeur and Kelly Johnson, the baby Braves have hit two solo home runs this afternoon. And a quick strike. <laughs> Nunez has done an outstanding job filling in for Scott Rowland. Rowland has had a terribly frustrating year with injury. Nunez skies that to right. That'll be caught by Fran Coor. And just like when we saw the Cardinals early in the season down Atlanta when the Braves weren't at full strength, Atlanta seeing a St. Louis team down that's really, really hammered. They're without Larry Walker. They're without Yadier Molina. They're without Reggie Sanders. And they're without Scott Rowland. You put those four guys in the middle of this batting order, and they're even more terrifying to face. Yeah, they're tough enough as it is. They have a little bit of a different philosophy here in St. Louis than the Braves organization. Braves try to sign youngsters and develop them to get them to that level and then entrust a responsibility to them, bring them up to the big league. Cardinals like to sign 29, 28, 29, 30 year olds. That's broken bad liner over third and fair into the corner. That's a tough break to Gucci on his way to second. He's been a pest this series. That's his third hit. And Taguchi is probably one of those that we're talking about. They they like to have a collection of guys at AAA or in his case coming from Japan that they can plug in. They know that they've had a lot of experience so it won't be sho a shock for him to do it instead of handing that responsibility to the youngsters. Nice work by Ron Culpa the third base umpire. As he straddled that line, saw the ball clearly hit the chalk. And Taguchi in with his 12th double. Here's Mahoney. I wonder if Mahoney reminds Tony LaRusso a little bit about of himself as a player. It, 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 that could be a reason that when you look at some of the catchers they've had here, they are a lot like Tony, who had to work his fanny off just to keep at it. It might be why also, too, you see him with a catcher as a pitching coach, Dave Duncan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of the people who are pitching coaches say, no, catchers can't be pitching coaches. That man has put together a good track record. 1-0 count to Mahoney, hitting a buck 95. And he hits a fly ball to left, and it's shattered. The barrel of it hits Okendo in the foot. And there's out number two for Chris Carpenter here. Oh, Kendo never saw the barrel of that bat coming his way. He was watching the track of the ball. And boy, he's lucky. That could have been very painful at bat. That man is going to be managing in the big leagues someday. See the back of the sports section today? Yep. They're celebrating the 40-year history of Bush Stadium. And they talked about Jose Okendo on May 14th, 1988. He was the first position player in 20 years to earn a pitching decision. The Cardinals lost to the Braves 7 5 in 19 innings. Round ball by Carpenter up the middle. For call, gloves, grabs off balance, throw, gets his man. Good play to retire Carpenter and the Cardinals. Two in the books, 2 0 Atlanta. Two nothing Atlanta as we head to our third inning. Kelly Johnson, Marcus Giles, and Andrew Jones are coming up on a hot, sticky day in St. Louis. Chip, before they make their way up there, I want to remind the folks that for every Braves run scored in today's ball game, Safe Auto Insurance will donate fifty dollars to the Braves Foundation, marvelous organization. Uh, they do a terrific job. Safe Auto Insurance, 
1-800-SAFE-AUTO. AUTO encourages you to get home safe. So Kelly Johnson with a home run to center his first time. Faces Carpenter here in the third inning. And uh, the big debate in St. Louis is who's going to win the Cy Young Award. Will it be Carpenter or the Cardinals or the ageless wonder Roger Clemens? Clemens will get the emotional vote. Carpenter will get the logical vote. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. I mean, Clemens has had just an unbelievable year for Houston. He pitches later on in San Francisco today. There you see where Carpenter ranks in the National League this season for the Cardinals. He's finally healthy after all kinds of arm problems sidelined him in 2002 and for all of the 2003 season. And were it not for some arm difficulties last year, the Cardinals run in the World Series might have been a, a little bit different. And Kelly on the breaking ball down on strikes. Two strikeouts for Carpenter. It'll bring up Marcus Giles. Carpenter said has been quoted as, as having said that it, that injury caused him to have to reassess his method of pitching. He still got good velocity but he doesn't rely on trying to throw harder and harder and harder all the time. He learned how to pitch. And I think the results are pretty evident. The Cardinals charter franchise in the National League have had unbelievable pitching throughout the history of this franchise. I mean, Steve Carlton started here, Bob Forsh, Bob Gibson, Dizzy Dean, the list goes on and on. But in the first 50 games pitched as a Cardinal, Chris Carpenter has the best record of any pitcher ever to wear the St. Louis uniform after that 50 game stretch. He's 31 and 9. Give me the ball, leave me alone, give me some runs. Pop to the left side, to the right side, I beg your pardon. Two balls, two strikes to Marcus Giles. So Carpenter's been a great find for the Cardinals. Matt Morris has come back 100%. He's a double digit winner. Giles into left center field, pretty well hit, but it's playable for Edmonds. He's got it, two down. In fact, Cardinals have four starters with 10 or more wins this season. And their ability to go deep in the games has made a pretty deep and good Cardinal panel a whole lot better. Here's Andrew Jones. Cardinals walked him his first time up. curveball. San Diego's getting hot folks and they're coming to Atlanta over this next home stand. They lead Washington three to nothing in the seven. Brewers are beating the Phillies by a two nothing score. Marlins are up two nothing on the Reds and the Dodgers are beating up on the Pirates six to nothing. Dodgers got six in the third. And Andrew Jones down on three pitches. Carpenter has started to find himself. He however trails by two after two and a half. Here we go, last of the third inning. Sorry, Don, top of the order coming up for the Cardinals. That's Eckstein, Rodriguez, and Albert Pujols. Jorge Sosa has yet to work a one, two, three inning. He's had base runners all over the place. But maybe this guy's experience as a relief pitcher is serving him in good stead as a starter. He puts him on and mows him down and keeps Atlanta in front. You know, at golf, they talk about laying up to a, a shot you're comfortable with, a distance. I hope that he doesn't find that he's trying to get into a comfort level that requires a couple of guys on base. Braves think Eckstein might try to bunt. And again, Jorge falls behind. One ball, no strikes. Off day for Atlanta tomorrow. Then it's home for the Giants. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday nights. Tuesday's game here on Turner South at 7.30 Eastern time. That's right through there, evening it up. The Diamondbacks will be in. The Dodgers will be in. The Padres will be in. And then we head to Chicago and Milwaukee. And here's where you can find the upcoming broadcasts. TBS games Thursday, Friday night against the D-backs. Sunday afternoon as well against Arizona. 
We were talking about Cy Young earlier and you mentioned that ball game in Washington San Diego leading three to nothing that lead has been handed to a young man where he getting a few more runs Jake Peavy would be a Cy Young candidate he's one of the best in the business and next time walks again well you are playing with fire Jorge if you keep doing that lead off man aboard for Rodriguez who singled to right yeah Don there was some doubt as to whether or not Peavy was going to be able to start that game today he was shagging balls in the outfield and caught one off his middle finger the other day and was bruised swollen up played catch yesterday and they said he's good to go today I kept telling him Jake go stand in the corner during batting practice and stay out of the way till somebody calls you or catch it one handed no. let no let the other guys catch the ball go to it when it stopped rolling toss it in underhanded and don't try to be an athlete like as Gene Mock would say be a pitcher not an athlete. Well they're beating up on Esteban Loiza today at RFK Stadium. Nationals lost another one run game yesterday. They've fallen 13 straight times in the closest games possible after nearly running the table in the first half of the season and Sosa falls behind another hitter. We were talking about Sosa's comfort level. Maybe there's something to it. Bases empty batters are hitting near 290. Runners on 206. Runners in scoring position 229. Bases loaded 100. Next time back at first. On base percentage uh, with bases empty too is about 360. So let's put it this way he's not trying to do it but he's not afraid to pitch with runners out there. Well no count. Maybe you should just work off the stretch as a starter all the time. Runner goes got a good jump swing and a miss the throw short hops close but not in time. Next time nearly got nailed at second base instead he has his eighth steal of the season. Cardinals are not one of the runningest teams around but if you get a big jump like Eckstein got you got to take a shot at it. McCann historically throws better than that but that's one where you, out of the corner of your eye you can see him going and I think he just quickened everything to try to get it to second. So Rodriguez an RBI chance here. And a six game hit streak. Two nothing Braves, two solo home runs. Out of play. A ball, two strikes. Would you encourage Sosa to pitch out of the stretch all the time? Sure. Why not? Uh, if, because you, you made a point earlier, he has been a reliever for the great part. Maybe that is more comfortable. Let's face it, it's simpler mechanics from the stretch than it is from the wide. You take about a third of your delivery out of play when you pitch in the stretch. One ball, two strikes. That one gets by McCann. Eckstein's going to try, and he's going to make it. Now a fly ball to put the Cardinals in front. Eckstein got a good lead and took off the moment McCann couldn't find it. That's good base running. He was bouncing away. Watch his momentum keep going. He sees the ball down. So he never hesitated and with with that play in front of him he could see how far it was away from him. pass ball is the official score. So Rodriguez now with a 2 2 count Pujols waiting on deck. Good pitch. Rodriguez down on strikes. First of the day for Sosa. Good off speed pitch. Down and away. Good arm action. Good location and great movement on that off speed pitch. Who else will try to atone for popping up in the first? Make a good pitch on the first pitch. Wasn't thinking about a curveball. That was right down the middle. 0 1 to Pujols. That's a surprisingly low statistic, I would think. Driven in the air, shallow right. Francoeur with five assists already. You don't figure Eckstein's going to try to come home. And he won't. Pujols 0 for 2 today. So 
So that percentage of driving home runners from third with less than two outs will trickle down right around 50 percent as they won't run on Jeff Francoeur and it's up to Edmonds who bounced out to second his first time up. Good play by Giles to rob him of a hit. Edmonds a four time all star started in center field for the National League this year. Eckstein at third he walked stole a base took third on a pass ball. Back door at one and one. Check out Eckstein's uniform. Usually, Cardinals say usually he gets it dirty before the first inning is over, and the highest laundry bill on the club belongs to him. That's he's an overachiever. That's the way he plays. Fans here in St. Louis might remember Bo Hart, who was a fan favorite, played yep. very similarly for them. He was a second baseman. One-one count. All you need to know about. David Eckstein is think of the other shortstops who have played here. The Wizard. Gary Templeton. Edgar Royce and Clayton. Clayton. Royce Clayton. Now it's Eckstein. I mean they have always concentrated on strong defense in the center of the diamond here for the Cardinals. Two balls and a strike. Dal Maxwell. Tip bat. Two and two. Dal Maxwell. Was Marty Marion a shortstop? Yes. And there was a. Uh, Latin American player in between Marion and Maxwell. I can't remember. Wore glasses, pain in the fanny to pitch to, hit the ball up the middle. And I see his face and his swing, unfortunately. But I can't remember the name. 2 2. Edmonds hits a towering fly ball to left. Kelly drifting back. He's got room, reaching for the wall. And again, Sosa issues a leadoff walk, and the Cardinals cannot cash it in. After three, it's 2 to nothing, Atlanta. Here's Adam LaRoche, 2 0 Atlanta, the lead. And that's in for a strike. And all of a sudden, Don Carpenter's throwing that breaking ball instead of the fastball, making the young Braves hitters adjust. Well, remember we were talking the other night, for most veteran pitchers, you either get them early. Or you may not get them, especially if they have a track record of having one, because there's something about getting comfortable. And for Carpenter, sure he's given up two homers, but he did, Braves haven't had a big inning to this point. Driven out of play, foul. You, you've always said that a starting pitcher's philosophy will be: you're going to give up your home runs, you're going to give up your runs. Try to stay out of big innings. That's it. Pitch away from a big inning. Go out there to pitch a no hitter. When you give up a hit, go out there to pitch a shutout. When you give up a run, pitch to win the ball game. One ball, two strikes. <laughs> Driven toward left. That ball in on his knuckles. And there's out number one. Adam 0 for 2, two fly balls to left in today's game. Here's Jeff Francoeur. Brian Moyer, our fine statistician, has some very impressive numbers for this kid, Don. A homer every 10.8 at bats. That's a quicker pace than Andrew Jones, who leads all of Major League Baseball with his home run tally. How do the Braves do in games he's homered in? Pretty well. They've won five of six. And he drives this ball the other way. Nothing in one year count. Keep throwing him fastball. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Well, it's just you and I talking anyway. So oh, okay. Right. Boy, I hope not. You mean nobody's listening? Well, well, that's. Better be listening in a the truck. There's a breaking ball. Backed him off the plate. One ball. One strike. <laughs> Slider. One and two. 
Oakland's winning again. They are 7 nothing in front of Kansas City. And they've got a big series coming up. They and the Angels are going to hook up for supremacy in the American League West. And an inside corner. Breaking ball throws Francoeur. He didn't think much of that. But that is strikeout number four for Carpenter. That's a good pitch only if the hitter gives up on it because if he doesn't give up, a uh, hanging inside breaking ball usually gets into that left field corner in a hurry. Seven straight retired by the St. Louis right-hander. Here's McCann. He popped out his first time. And he breaks his bat and rolls that over the glove of Pujols into the corner. McCann will avoid the lumber. He'll round the first base bag. He'll try for two. The pro is in time to nail it. So Taguchi having himself quite a series. Give McCann a single. He's thrown out trying to move it into second base. Braves are done in the fourth. It's 2 nothing. Was indeed a celebrity before he got to be a celebrity chef. Okay. So we he didn't just tack that on there so it would fill up the right amount of time for the promo. Gotcha. All right. Works out great. Looking forward to that. Back home at Turner Field where we will see many of you Tuesday night. Here it's 2 nothing Atlanta. Last regular season game in the sauna that has long been known as Bush Stadium. Many years ago, they had an all-star game early in the existence of this then multi-purpose facility. It used to be the home of the football Cardinals here. Had the AstroTurf. And Casey Stengel was asked of his initial impressions of the ballpark. <laughs> he said, well, it sure holds heat well. <laughs> and he's right. Fans here have baked for many a year. And that's not just when Bake McBride was playing. 0-2 to count, two goods along. Well, I saw a guy that I played with who was not a Yale graduate, let's put it that way. <laughs> Play here one day in the heat with the AstroTurf, and I mean, it was a miserable. Today is mild. Fly ball, well hit left field. Kelly turns the wrong way, but recovers. Nice play. Looked like a defensive back on punt duty, but he handles it one down. It's one of those days where, you know, today really, this has really been a mild three days, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. But the turf was there, and it was about 90 degrees, 90 percent humidity, and this particular outfielder thought it would be a marvelous idea to keep himself cool, especially his feet, if he would put aluminum foil in his shoes. <laughs> they that were worked. one inning, and they were both medium well. Well, Terry Pendleton, who played and starred here for many years with the Cardinals, tells the story of playing on the turf as Nunez hits for the second time today. They would collectively with the Cardinals have a, a, a jug of spirits of ammonia water mm -hmm. to cool off with. They would stick their feet, shoes, socks and all in that bucket and then go out and take ground balls before the first pitch. And he said the shoes were dry by the time the inning was over. Fly ball again to left. Sosa has the first two easily here. And Kelly's been busy three straight putouts in left. Here's Taguchi. I can remember pitching games here. Day games where you never left or I never left the dirt surface of the mound unless I absolutely had to Just stay on that dirt. Don't go out on that other stuff. Well they have the ownership here I speak of has all collectively done a marvelous job of making what was then a real antiseptic 70s style stadium really look and feel like a great ballpark with the retired numbers the manual scoreboards in the outfield. They still have the bird. And the scoreboard in center field. Of course, the natural grass as that's grounded towards short for calls. Got it. Hey, Sosa's got a one, two, three inning, by the way. We got a good pitching duel on in St. Louis, and the Braves are in front. A hot summer Sunday in St. Louis. Final game between the Braves and Cardinals in regular season play this year. Atlanta leads by two. And Wilson Benevitt will go to work first. And Carpenter almost exclusively now, Don, with that breaking pitch for strike one. Well, he has two of them. That's his get-over curveball. It comes in about 10 miles an hour slower than his punch-you-out curveball, that one. And he can throw it between 72 and 82 miles an hour. But when he learned to really become a good pitcher, that, that's when he learned to have a get-over curveball. Something not straight you could throw in there. 
in the strike zone. One, two. That's wasted away. One ball, two strikes. We mentioned that Astros, they sent Roger Clemens to the mound in San Francisco today. The Giants tried to do something that hasn't happened often, if at all. Benamit down on strikes. A win by the Giants today would allow them to beat Pettit, Oswalt, and Clemens in a three-game series. So it can be done, but Roger Clemens having himself a great season takes the hill at SBC Park. One away for Sosa. Base is clear. 2-0 Atlanta. We're in the fifth. Sosa tried to bunt, and Albert Pujols caught that in the air. And a curve for a strike. Cardinals go out on a road trip after this ball game as well. I think they head to Milwaukee and Chicago. And that'll be another strikeout. Mahoney will have to make the throw to first. And that's six strikeouts for Chris Carpenter today. You got two pitchers that I would think uh, infielders would enjoy playing behind. Both of them are quick workers and for the most part uh, grab the ball, go right back to the plate with their pitch. So for call, we'll take a little extra time here and allow Sosa to get back to the Atlanta dugout. Another gigantic crowd in St. Louis. They've drawn over 40,000 for what will be the 21st consecutive time today. They were predicting 142 to 145,000 for this weekend. 48 plus yesterday. Now they should fly right past it, one would think. This has been an excellent series. Lots of offense. Today, good pitching. And the youngsters for Atlanta have come through in the early innings, as you often have to do against Carpenter. I don't know. I know you spent some time in your life here, didn't you? Oh, grew up here for the most part. And yeah. I'm not trying to start an argument or anything, but I think that during baseball season, this is the best downtown on weekends in the league, especially with a Cub Cardinal series. And there was a story in the paper here about that as to why is the Cub Cardinal rivalry such a great rivalry. It's usually the Cardinals in first the Cubs in second. There really hasn't been much on the line except for two years ago as far as a division championship is concerned. When you look however at the success the Cardinals and the Braves have had and how frequently it seems the possibility of these two teams hooking up in the playoffs can be. Why isn't this a more fierce rivalry than we have seen and right now the Braves are seeing the best of Chris Carpenter he strikes out the side in a fifth but he trails it by a two nothing score. Here's Mike Mahoney Texas tenderfoot I, that's not bad. No, I'd say I would say these brought busters not tenderfoot. Is it tender feet or tender foots. Both on what part of the south you from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's see if the high, low, high, low pitch trend continues for Sosa. He got him out very easily on eight pitches in the fourth. Jorge has set down six consecutive men and has held this hot hitting Cardinal team to just two hits. And he misses low to Mahoney. Your thoughts on that rivalry? Will this one continue to grow between the Braves and Cardinals? No. Yes. Because they no. don't see each other enough? They don't see each other enough. If we had 18 games a year where we, the Braves and the Cardinals would go with each other, you're darn right because it's close enough. Part of what makes a great rivalry is the accessibility for the fans to both ballparks. So you don't just get all Cardinal fans. Line to left. Johnson drifts back. One man out. You don't just get all Cardinal fans when the Cubs are here. You get Cub fans. You get Cardinal fans going to Chicago. So I'm not so sure... It's not always just the teams that create a rivalry. It's the fans that uh, create, make it grow. So I think you need 18 times going head to head for it to happen. The old expression familiarity breeds contempt certainly yeah. applies in a friendly way between the Cubs and the Cardinals. Make no mistake if these two teams were fortunate enough to earn their way into the NLCS which has happened before. Talk about a great series. That, that could possibly be very evenly matched clubs would hook up Cardinals as of now have the best record in the head to head 
rankings of National League play. But the Braves making a run at that as well. Carpenter is going to be a very easy out. Two outs, top of the order for Eckstein. There you see it as of now. The Braves are five and a half games behind St. Louis as far as the best record in the National League is, is concerned. And the Braves playing so many games at home, they conceivably could pass the Cardinals. And that would be a big lift to have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Don't we know that? Home runs are even. Cardinals, surprisingly, a little bit better of an earned run average. But factor in two, Don, three of the Braves starters have been hurt for most of the year. So that's very impressive work for both these teams. I and think. it's been a revolving door to kind of get the Braves bullpen established. Whereas here, these, this bullpen has the second best numbers in the National League. Jorge. One, one other thought on the, uh, the question you asked me about the rivalry. And we talked about the numbers. It's been 14 weeks since these two clubs saw right. each other. Right. The Braves have had a completely remade roster. And it, it, that's that's the part of the schedule I, I absolutely hate. Uh, you only see a team twice. When the Cardinals saw the Braves in Atlanta, they were all banged up. Braves took two or three. The Braves are seeing the Cardinals all banged up. They might take two or three here. Zach Stein rips that inside the bag fair. For calls, got to hustle out and play the carom as it took an odd bounce. And Eckstein in with a double. He's on for the third time in this game, and the tying run comes to the plate. That's a great example there why if you're a shortstop in a park like this, like Philadelphia, you've got to remind yourself when it's headed for the corner to get out there. Zips right over the bag, but that part sticking out if it goes by it. Kelly Johnson was headed for the corner. He'll reverse his field in time to get to it, but you'll see for call in the picture, and he was already headed out there. There have been some gift triples uh, on a play like that because the shortstop forgot the oddity of the angles there. So Rodriguez the hitter. And Sosa drops in a strike. Getting back to the schedule. In the old days, you'd go to a city twice, and they would come to your place twice. I know that the importance of playing within your division is such that you really are placing a premium on winning games against your geographical opponents. But for me, that's the downside of so many intradivisional games. You don't go to the West Coast twice. You don't see the Cardinals four times. You don't see the Cubs four times. Well, we've got to make sure we can have interleague play. I like interleague play. I just think there's too much of that, too. That's, but again, that's just one man's opinion. There's never going to be a perfect schedule. Ball and a strike. 2-0 Atlanta the lead. Check swing. There's a break. That's in the Atlanta dugout. And Rodriguez down 1-2. and two. Look out, Bobby. Well, he got out of the way in a hurry. He was motoring. I think he'll appreciate oh. your description of that. Pujols waiting on deck. Let's worry about him in the sixth. Did he go? He went around, and that retires the side. A two-out double from Eckstein is wasted. After five, Sosa continues his great work for the Braves. Seven strikeouts, including four in the last two innings of work. And he will face Kelly Johnson, Giles, and Andrew Jones. Here for the third time today. Kelly Johnson with eight home runs. Seven of the eight, Don, have been with runners on. He finally worked himself into the solo home run category today. It's been a streaky year for him, but I am convinced that as he learns a little more about the pitchers and kind of learns a little more about himself, he's got a chance to put together a 300 batting average very easily. That was my question. What kind of a hitter do you think Kelly Johnson's going to be? Is hitting second his best spot or do you think he's a lower third of the order hitter no I Atlanta? think I think you put him you you convince him that gap to gap is the way to hit and I would hope nobody would say boy we need a 30 home run year out of you if it happens accidentally great but I think you'd be happier with a 35 double year especially in Turner Field which sure. is a great place to hit gap to gap Maybe. To two count. When Kelly was swinging his best, it was because he was in counts like the one you see. He'd see five, six pitches, spoil a couple, and then drive a ball 
into one of those gaps or over the fence. It's going to be an interesting pitch selection here for Carpenter. Let's we'll see what he does. Fastball after showing all the breaking balls. And we, we've been surprised talking between breaks about the breaking balls of Carpenter. It's not just a, a curveball and a slider, but there's another one in there, too, isn't there? Yeah, there's a middle one. He has a slow curve uh, that he can throw a spot for a strike. Then he pump it up a little bit. Here comes the slider. If, no, this is going to be a changeup. And he missed with it. Full count. That's the one you want the hitter to put in play. That's his fourth pitch, but he has a, the get-over curveball. Then he has a hard strike-em-out curveball, and his slider is just a shorter version thrown in the low 80s. He takes ball four. Carpenter really wanted that pitch, and he takes a walk to the first base side of the mound. And Dan Iasonia sees Carpenter issue his second base on balls in the game. How close was that one? He's got to be hearing about it from the Cardinal dugout, too. Some umpires will give you east and west. Others will give you north and south. But Dan Iasonia has never been at the kneecaps uh, strike caller. Here's Marcus Giles. He's got a long hit streak. But he'll try to keep alive here. It's at 11 games. He's flat out twice. Timeout is requested by Giles here. It took the long inning in the night yesterday for Giles to get up. He was 0 for 3 with a walk coming to the ninth inning. But uh, some three base hits in a row gave him the opportunity to come up. Braves punts. Giles deadens it beautifully right in front of the mound. I was just about to say there are a couple of ways you could play it. You could hit and run with Giles who shoots the ball to the right side. Or would the Braves see if he can lay down a bunt and force the Cardinals to pitch carefully to Andrew Jones, LaRoche, and Fran Coor here? Well, you have to be convinced by now that you're not going to get a big inning off Carpenter the way he's dealing. And I think every one run you add on could be the difference in the ballgame. Mm -hmm. Now manage along with Tony LaRusso. What do you do with Andrew here? He's walked and struck out. I put him on a breaking ball diet. If he wants to chase it, great. If he doesn't, that's your prerogative. I don't think Andrew Jones should see a fastball to hit at this at bat. Pulls it towards short. Next time's going to run down Kelly Johnson. And a poor bit of base running there. Andrew Jones aboard with two outs. What's the rule of thumb there for a base? A base runner. Well, you you want to make sure the ball passes by the infielder before you break. But I think sometimes the the desire to get going takes over. See, that looked like it was headed for the hole, but they were playing him to pull. So by the time your brain catches up with your instincts, sometimes you're hung up as he was. The first instinct is I got to get a good jump because I want to score. So the sacrifice doesn't work. Jones at first, two outs for LaRoche. Adam has five to left twice. Let's see if he can work the count a bit. Jumps at the first one, it's out of place, strike one. And by the way, that was a slider to Andrew that he put in play. Yep. First final in, Padres win again. They shut out Washington, who's been without Brian Schneider for a couple of games. Three to nothing was the final. PV over Loiza. So the Nationals continue to really struggle in the East. Great story in the first half, but. They've just been ground down. I'll have our Brian Moyer check to see if PB got a nine inning shutout out of that. No balls and a strike to count to Adam LaRoche. Swinging bunt right in front of the mound. Easy play for the Cardinal catcher and he makes it. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits. One left, middle of the sixth. Big Albert Pujols coming up for the Cardinals. So as Albert Pujols, Jim Evans, and Mark Grudzelanek are coming up for the Cardinals. It's a 2-0 Atlanta lead. Boy, Sosa, knock on wood, is thrown beautifully again in this game. Just one, one, two, three inning. He scattered three Cardinal hits. His longest outing as a starter has been six innings. He's done that three times, so we'll keep an eye on him in this inning. 
Pujols takes a strike. Don, you said it at the time in the first inning, the sequence of Sosa Pujols with two men on and nobody out might be the turning point in the game. You don't often say that in a major league game, but to this point, that's been the case. He well, couldn't drive a man home. No, and remember he jumped on a pitch early in the count off Smoltz to give him the lead. Uh, I thought that was going to set the tenor for the whole ball game. Good breaking ball. Pujols didn't expect that. Well, he's taken some pitches from Sosa. Maybe it's his lack of familiarity with him, as I said, uh, just before we went on the air. Only Eckstein has had a history against Jorge Sosa. Driven to right, Francoeur has room. Albert Pujols is 0-4-3. Good way to start the sixth by taking care of that guy. And what he's done, too. Remember we were talking earlier about how to pitch to him. You make him make the ball part longer. Take it the other way. They've gotten him out twice on flies to right field. Here's Jim Edmonds, though. Another dangerous hitter for the Cardinals. Edmonds retired by Marcus Giles, who made a sprawling diving grab in the first inning of play. That saved a run and a couple of bases. Edmonds also flat out to left. He's going to crack that one to left again. Kelly Johnson going back, still going back, leaps up. It's off the wall. And Edmonds is on his way to second. Andrew Jones backs up. Big turn. And that's where Edmonds will park. Tying run comes up for the Cardinals as Edmonds hit it a long way the other way. Let's check out the location of this pitch, too, because I think it's another one that was up. And we talked about before how a lot of times before he has hit that ball up in the air and gotten under it. Now whatever he's doing differently he's driving it and for Kelly Johnson that's a no man's land. You would like to stay back and play that but still that height on the wall you also got to continue to think you might be able to make the catch. Yeah give him what he earned he earned a double. And now Grudzelanek who also has fly to left twice. 2-0. Hits are even at four, but the Braves lead where it counts. Out of play for a strike. If you're a hitting coach, I think you could take the same approach watching and teaching Grozolanik as you would Marcus Giles. Both of them with inside-out swings, and both of them, and Hal McCray certainly one of the best in the game, both of them with inside-out swings want to take that pitch to the right side. That's where Grozolanik was hitting it when he was knocking down 50 something doubles. Good stop McCann. That's a good thing Grudzelonik's got broad shoulders. You'd miss half his name if you didn't. <laughs> Can't picture that name on Eckstein's back. No. My grandfather had no shot. <laughs> He's had a good curveball, slider, whatever you want to call it, all day today. That's the pitch that they've taken for strike more than any other pitch that he's thrown. As Don mentioned, Sosa's gone six innings three times with the Braves as a starter. He is two outs away from equaling that today. It's not been an easy day to pitch. It's very, very hot. Swing and a miss. Grunzelanek chased another breaking ball. Two out. That's pitching. That's pitching. That's just like Carpenter. Throw him the pitch for a strike, then throw him a better one out of the strike zone. You, know, you mentioned your, your grandfather. I'm glad we don't have a Garcia Para to Grzelanik to Menkevitz. So does he. <laughs> he result. He finally. He finally gave up and just started calling him the G-Man. <laughs> Here's Nunez. Six, he, he's 0 for two. Six four three would work. In that work too. Ground ball foul pass first. I covered Grudzelanik the last couple of years with the Cubs. And the only bad thing about having him in the lineup every day, you get writer's cramp just on that spot in the lineup, filling out the card, man. Just put, what do you, what do you write? G-R-U-Z. I put G-Man. So, Same number of yeah, letters. Exactly right. But he's, he's a terrific player. And again, filling in for Tony Womack here in St. Louis. Womack went to the Yankees. Grudzelanik, a different kind of player, but still very tough, very gritty, and very solid for the Cardinals. 
Right now they're swinging at the invisible baseball. See, we can write that because we're not great. We're only graded on political correctness. We're not graded on neatness. Yo. Thank goodness. Oh, and to the count to Abraham Nunez. Yesterday, the Cardinals got all of Tim Hudson they could handle. He rediscovered his split finger pitch. Today, Sosa to this point has been slidering these guys to death. Two and two. I give Ke uh, Brian McCann a lot of credit, too, because I don't think he's shaken him off too many times, and he's mixed that breaking ball in just at the right time. This kid is a smart catcher. Checking out the hitter. Where is he standing? What do you got? Breaking ball again. Combination of signs with a runner out at second. I would look breaking ball. And he got him with it. Sosa's through six and is shutting out the St. Louis Cardinals. This has been the Lojack caught stealing inning. Log on to turnersouth.com slash Lojack so you can be eligible for the next drawing. Well, like our producer Glenn Diamond, Braves are hoping to make a second trip here in St. Louis come October. <laughs> Two solo home runs. The difference today, and Jeff Francoeur's hit one of them. He'll lead off the seventh inning for the Braves, who lead by a 2-0 score. Very efficient day so far for Carpenter. A lot of pitches early, but averaging just over 13 per inning. Jeff lays off that breaking ball and I don't think Carpenter's thrown him a strike yet in this at bat but he's ahead of him one and two. This guy's a very smart very underrated pitcher for St. Louis finally healthy. And a serious Cy Young candidate he might win it going away before it's all said and done. If you figure this Cardinal offense gets healthy all the run support he's going to be treated to is going to be a big help for him in the latter stages of August and September. Backdoor curveball got him again. Boy oh boy he's really hammering the inside corner. That's eight strikeouts in the game. Twice he's gotten Francoeur on this pitch throws a curveball at him and from where Mahoney set up I'm convinced they're trying to do this. You know, we were always taught to be afraid to throw it in there but twice it's worked. A lot of right handed hitters seeing that ball come at him will give up on it. That's what you're counting on. Carpenter's season high in strikeouts is 10. He did that when he beat his former team, the Blue Jays, back in the middle of June. So he's got eight now, and McCann the hitter. McCann won for two. Boy, after that first inning, Don, it's been breaking ball for strike one virtually at every hitter kind of reverse the way of doing things because he should you can do that if you're convinced you can throw a curveball for a strike but more often than not about 80 percent of the time that first pitch has been a strike today there's another one one and two see how Mahoney is catching that ball Braves are familiar with him they had him in the organization for a while he was in spring training but he lets that ball come to him you're not going to get that outside corner call if you reach out for the breaking ball, but if you let it just settle into your mitt, back by the chest protector. There's number nine, two outs in the seven. Get him early or you might not get him at all. That's the story with Carpenter. Braves have one hit in the last four and two-thirds innings against this talented right-hander. Only four all day long, and one of them belongs to Wilson Betterman. That one came back in the second inning. He also checked his swing and was struck out in the fifth. It's a rare fastball. One ball, no strengths. Cardinals and their fans looking forward to moving across the street here next year. Brand new Bush Stadium will be ready, they hope, around opening day. As Pettimit charges that ball, Edmonds in center. Makes the grab. Three up, three down. Time to stretch. Time to cool off. These Cardinal bats again. It's 2-0 Atlanta. There's a great look at Old Bush Stadium here in St. Louis. And there's an artist's rendition of what the new Bush Stadium will look like. And that's the manner of construction to this point. Already some of those red seats going in down what will be the right field line here in St. Louis. The railing you saw there is a part of this ballpark. Uh, left field will actually enter into this area. 
foul pole. You can't see it there, but it's kind of right over here, and there's where it will be. We already put it up here just to give folks an idea of where it's going to be located. So right after the Cardinals are done playing within two weeks of their final out, whether it's early or late in the playoffs, they will implode Bush Stadium. The memories will live on, but this playing surface won't. And the Redbirds will have a new roost in 2006. So Taguchi jumps on the first pitch, pops it up. Long run for Colin Benamit near the stands. Rafi can't get there. Benamit skids into the stands, and let's hope he's all right. Looked like, look like he tripped trying to slow down, and he may not be hurt, but right now he's not comfortable. I saw Bill Miller when he was with the Cubs on a play just like that, slide into that rotating sign that you see, tore up his knee, fractured his knee, tore ligaments, and dislocated the kneecap on a horrible play for the Cubs. And after that series, they put that padding around those signs. That's a very dangerous corner. Fly ball, center field, right at Andrew. Taguchi's retired. And there is out number one as Sosa tries to pitch the longest in a major league game since September 12, 2004 with the Devil Rays at Kansas City. And he's been very economical. One out for Mahoney. He's popped out to left twice. I wonder if there was any thought given to calling the ballpark across the way, Jack Buck Stadium. Longtime voice here of the Cardinals, Hall of Fame member. His son Joe does the games on a part time basis here in St. Louis. I'm sure that was uh, thought up, but I think you would have to go past. Stay in the man stadium to yep, get that's, there. That's true. That's true. I think there are a lot of names you could think of. Why not just call it the gas house? Be great. Those Cardinal teams in the 30s. Sure. And Mahoney is down on strikes. Two quick outs. And here's the surprise. They're going to let Carpenter hit for himself in the late innings down two runs. Remember, the Cardinals will have the top of their order coming up. Not a whole lot of pressure on anybody except that young man right there today. His name is Eric Van Zandt. He's Chris Van Zandt. Chris is the assistant uh, clubhouse director here and assistant director of team travel. Why is there pressure on him? This is the 14th game he's been the bat boy. He's 13 and 0. Really? And don't think Big Brother wasn't reminding him of that all morning, too. You've got a palatial mansion in Atlanta makes break room for the guy for crying out loud ball one strike one I'm sorry run that by me again <laughs> which part make room or the palatial <laughs> mansion part that part oh that and and sophisticated are two terms I don't think will ever be run past my name grounded toward third Wilson Benjamin make him run a little bit Wilson Carpenter retired three up three down Sosa seven innings for Atlanta what a night or day for him and he will take matters in his own hands. He's due up first. Usually when you get the hero's welcome as you come off the field, you know that's the end of the day. Bobby Cox patting him on the back. A terrific outing for Sosa. Seven innings, four hits. Didn't allow a run. Got out of that jam in the first inning. Had only two, one, two, three innings, but never made a mistake that could hurt him. Walked a couple and struck out five, and boy, does he continue to deliver as the... I think right now you've got to take that emergency start attack off of it. He's, yeah, earned, he's earned the right to be a regular. Yeah, the only emergency is for the opposition because they can't hit him. So look at that line. Only 87 pitches for Sosa, who was in all kinds of trouble early in the game. But a great job to do these Cardinal bats, at least to this point. So Pete Orr will pinch hit. Then it's for call, then it's Kelly Johnson. Carpenter's still on, but down a couple of runs. And here's a spot where Tony La Russa manages like the way Bobby Cox will manage sometimes. Only a two-run game with the top of his order coming up. He'll let Carpenter stay in the game. As that one rattles the photographers well down the line. He'll let Carpenter stay in the game and try to get a win with his offense. Isn't that John Smoltz's father there? John might want to give him a glove. That got in and out of there in a hurry. Oh, two. And Orr fouls it away.
Bounce to the right side. Mark Radzelanek. One man down. Pete Orr, as he always does, hustles down the line. But he's out number one. Here's for call. Raphael with a five-game streak in jeopardy. He's 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts today. Looking ahead to the last of the eight, Eckstein, Rodriguez, and Pujols are due for St. Louis. Cardinals have been shut out just one, two, three, four times this year. They're being shut out today. Who did the dealing on those? Glavin was a part of one, I know. Our call fouls that off the plate and then off himself. Randy Johnson started one of the others. Colorado. Although, yeah, Colorado. And then uh, San Francisco. Raphael limping around. Dan Iasonia does a good job when there's a foul ball off the catcher or one off the uh, off the hitter of kind of taking a little walk around to not rush them back. Here's the count with the left-handers where either he's come way inside off the plate with a fastball to set up the backdoor breaking ball or he's immediately gone to the backdoor breaking ball. Kyle Farnsworth is loosening in the Braves bullpen. He will come on for inning number eight. Nice job by Mahoney. Boy, he took some punishment knocking that ball down. Might wonder why, why would he put that much effort into it because there's not a runner on base. Because it very easily could have been strike three. And if it's strike three, you've got to keep it out in front of you so you can make the throw and get the put out at first. And those guys behind the plate take a lot of pride in their defense. Another roller, right side, Pujols, even with the bag. Gets the call by a mere step. Two outs. Base is clear for Kelly Johnson. He homered with one out to right center field. Jeff Rancourt homered to left, and that's all the scoring we've seen today. See the National League scores across your screen. Good news from Washington. Padres get a victory from Jake Peavy. He had 10 strikeouts today. Uh, I think, yeah, 10 strikeouts. Pitch, I gave up five hits, I think. Xavier Nady hit a home run. Eric Young back. He dislocated his shoulder in the first days of the season. He hit his second. Marlins beat the Reds by two. Dontrell Willis with a win in the second half. He'd really been struggling. He's got 15 of them. Ortiz pitched better but lost for the Cincinnati club. Pirates trying to come back late against the Dodgers. Los Angeles has dominated Pittsburgh. Especially in Pittsburgh. Yeah, they're 14 and 3 coming into play today at PNC Park. Zach Duke, by the way, won yesterday. He's 5 0. Oh. Brewers are beating the Phillies. Go, Brew Crew, go. Tomo Oka, Vicente Padilla, the starters in that game. Brew Crew trying to get the 500. And Milwaukee still thinks they've got a shot at the playoffs. They're four and a half games behind Houston. As play begins today, Astros will send Roger Clemens to the mound in San Francisco later. It's been a long time since the Brewers and the Brewer fans have been able to have that feeling. Good for them. And Kelly down on strikes. That's 10 for Carpenter in the game, but he needs some offensive help, and the top of the order is coming up against Kyle Farnsworth. A few of the scores, but let's check out everything else on our Delta scoreboard. Feel free to check them out as they scroll by on the bottom there to recap a couple of important things. Jake Peavy's win was his 10th. He's 10 and 4. Dontrell Willis over Cincinnati, a four-hit shutout for him. Milwaukee, that was Oka's sixth win. He's 6 and 6. No home runs in that ball game. A big six-run third inning, what did the damage for the Dodgers, and uh, let's see if there's anything of any real significance over in the American League. Let me see. 
Cleveland 6-5 with 3 in the 8 to beat Detroit. Blake, Sizemore, and Belliard all with Homer. There's a look at our Delta scoreboard, and there's a look at the Braves' new pitcher. His name, Kyle Farnsworth. He has given up one run in three innings since coming over from the Detroit Tigers, and this situation is exhibit A as to why the Braves wanted to get a guy like Farnsworth. If they can take the eighth inning out of play, they feel very confident with the way Chris Reitzman has pitched the ninth inning. If you can shorten a major league game to seven innings, more often than not, you're going to win. But Farnsworth's got to go through the top three in the Cardinal order today. And that starts with Eckstein and a blazing fastball high. One ball, no strikes. Two walks and a double for Eckstein. Inside corner, a good pitch. Historically, Farnsworth, while with the Cubs, had all kinds of trouble pitching in this ballpark. Yesterday, I think there was some concern. He, uh, trainer Jeff Porter, Bobby Cox went out, and he was holding his left side as he went back in the dugout. But obviously, he's all right. Little flair. Can anybody catch it? Francoeur can. One man down. Boy, speed never slumps. Jeff got a late break. And the big swing, I think, fooled him for a moment. Good start for Kyle here in the eighth inning, one down. Started calling early. That's a sign of respect by the quarterback in center field, giving way to the young right fielder. Here's Rodriguez. He's calling himself J-Rod, huh? Yeah, J-Rod. Better than J-Lo. He's one for three <laughs> with a couple of strikeouts. J-Rod, there you are. J-Rod will have arrived, though, when the shoe company puts that on that's, for him, and you don't have point. to put your magic marker and do it. <laughs> He's all New York. He is J-Rod. He just missed a double. Strike one. He's a good player, and I, you know what? I have no problem with that. You mentioned earlier how he's been around uh, in the minor leagues and he, he is not exactly a rookie, so what the heck. Another sellout today. 47. Come on, Brian, get the fingers going. Seven. I Four, got seven, the seven, seven, one. one. I got the Four. one. I got the one. Okay. That's the way it's going to be. One strike to Rodriguez. Just eight hits today in St. Louis. Braves have the two big clouts, two solo homers. Off the plate, evens the count. One ball, one strike. Did they get their 144,000 this weekend, Brian? Oh, great CPA that thou art. Just because he dresses like one doesn't make him one, Don. Come on. It's the plastic pencil oh, holder. Okay. That's Off the plate, ball two. <laughs> two balls and a strike. Why does it say answer 19.6? <laughs> he was giving you the cosine and the maximum federal deductible on the attendance today. 2-1, base is clear. The count that is for Rodriguez. Two nothing is the score. Just joining us. He swung at ball three. There's a break. And Farnsworth has a wicked slider. Well, he's been chasing that slider down and in all day long. Uh, Sosa got him in the third on that pitch. Got him again in the fifth. Do it again. He fought it off this time. Two balls, two strikes. How about that? For the weekend, they got 144,117. So good day at the turnstiles. Okay. Good weekend at the turnstiles. And a good attendance guess by you. You had it cleared by 117 fans. Good counting. 2-2. Two -two. Breaking ball, bounce to first. Easy play, LaRoche. And Albert Pujols can hit one to Collinsville, Illinois, and the Braves would still be in front. Two outs. Base is clear for Albert, who's had a frustrating day today. You two made the point on, early. Two on, nobody out in the first inning. A big pitch by Sosa to get him to pop up. Fastball in on his hand. Then he got him again. Fastball in on his hands to right field. Then went down and away. That was probably the best pitch of the three that got him out. But that pitch in the first inning was a monstrous pitch. Pujols 
as you saw on the video hitless today and this matchup one that proves what scouts say is true major league players can hit a hundred mile an hour fastball if that's what they see a lot of and pools rips at the first one out of play for a strike but you talk about a man against another man here you go Farnsworth versus pools oh unhit what a nasty slider when he's got that pitch he is not fun to face and I, I firmly believe that Kyle Farnsworth half the battle for him is being just have him built up get some confidence and just go fastball away and he hit it away straight away center field deep Andrew Jones it's a one run game If you don't get it away, he'll hit it a mile. I still think that was on the outer third of the plate, but when you have a guy of his caliber, not every hit is going to be on a bad pitch. That ball on the outer third, watch the mitt. It was headed for the mitt, but the difference in the pitch and the away pitch from Sosa, this one was at the top of the belt, Sosa's was at the knees. So Pujols continues his good work against Kyle Farnsworth. That's his 31st homer, and it's still very much in doubt. Into the pen goes Bobby Cox with our singular wireless call to the bullpen. It'll be John Foster and Jim Evans hooking up next. Foster is in for Atlanta. He will face Jim Edmonds. Not a whole lot of history for John Foster as you look at his numbers between him and the Cardinal hitters against Edmonds two at bats and Edmonds without a hit at his two tries. Rob Zelonik waits on deck for the Cardinals as Edmonds thought about tying it. That's where you go to get him. Keep the ball above the golden bat on that jersey and you have a you have a reasonable shot at having Evans pop it up or strike out on it. Oh, and two. Edmonds has been very helpful on the first two pitches. Neither was a strike. Now with two strikes, and that was a two-strike pitch that Pujols hit. Bounce that curveball, see if he'll help you in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. That's what makes the home run so frustrating. Farnsworth is on the outer third, but with two strikes, it was good enough for Pools to extend his arms. Whoa! Edmonds ducks out of the way. Did he swing at that pitch? Did he go? Oh, they say he didn't swing. Wow, Edmonds ducks out of the way. Bobby Cox out of the dugout said he swung at that pitch. Edmonds gets another chance here in a 2-2 count. Ron Culpa was saying he wasn't swinging. He was trying to get out of the way. And a little debate. Stay back at third, Ron. Here's your chance to take a look at it. Started the swing and then was falling away. Let go of the bat. Now the Cardinal fans down the left field line start to stand and scream at Bobby Cox as the at-bat and the inning continues for St. Louis. If he gets on or if he gets a base hit, you might see Bobby take this a little bit further. All this trouble with two outs, a solo homer, and the Cardinals one swing away from tying it. Here's your chance to be an umpire. That's what Bobby Cox is looking at. He's thinking right there, that's a strike. 
Whatever happened after it, insignificant. That's Bobby's point. Tying run on. Now Grotzelanek is due. And Bobby Cox again goes to his bullpen. He'll bring on the right-hander who was loosening. Is it Reitzma? I believe so. So Chris is going to have to work overtime, it would appear. I'd keep an eye on this, too, because Bobby has already made the call to the bullpen, but it would not surprise me to see him stick around out there after the pitcher comes in from the bullpen, maybe to invite Iasonia or Culpa to come out and have a chat. And here comes Iasonia right now, striding resolutely. This is not going to be. As a matter of fact, it's quite calm. Well, he's not upset with Iasonia. I think Bobby said, I know I'm pointing at the guy at third base. He's the man that had the best look at it. Bobby Cox disagreed with Ron Culpa's call. 2-1 to score. Braves still lead, but it's Chris Reitzma time here in St. Louis. Back here in St. Louis, what was a game just cruising right along has gotten a little too interesting for the Braves' liking. It's two to one. Tying run is on in the form of Jim Edmonds, and Chris Reitzma is on to bail out John Foster here in the eighth. This and this has been a very mild-mannered, well-played, well-umpired ball game, and, and not that it isn't to this point. But this here we are in the eighth inning of the third game, and that's the first controversial play we've had. Chris Reitzman has been nothing shy of spectacular for Atlanta. And he will try to retire Mark Rodzelanek, who is 0 for 3. Now you made a point about Edmonds a moment ago. Keep an eye on him. I would not have been surprised if with all that's gone on right now, a lot of people thinking about a lot of other things, I wouldn't have been surprised if he'd have sent Edmonds on the first pitch. Edmonds is only two out of six in the stolen base department. Runs a lot it. Down a strike. Not going. Roll toward third. Benamit waits on it. Patty Cakes fires the first and in time, and that'll retire the side. One run, one hit, one left. Braves go to the plate in the ninth, leading by a skinny run. From one closer to another, Chris Reitzma shuts the door on the Cardinals in the eighth. Three more outs to get for Atlanta. And they'd love to pick up a little insurance against Jason Isringhausen, the man that makes this Cardinal bullpen go. Down in years past when Izzy's been hurt, Tony La Russa's really had to mix and match with a great deal of success. But this is a totally different Cardinal team when he's pitching at peak form, and he is this year, as you see, 29 saves already. At a minuscule ERA of 166. The one thing, and, and you've got to be doing a lot of things right to have that kind of record where Isinghausen is 0-1, 29 saves, as you pointed out, only given up one home run, but every now and then, he pitches himself into some jams. He's walked 20 in under 40 innings, so he's averaging about five walks per nine innings. Giles 0 for 2 with a sacrifice in today's game. And he jumps the first ball from Isringhausen. Lifetime Marcus 0 for 2 against the Cardinal right-hander who came up in the Mets system and was going to be one of their three great pitching hopes along with Paul Wilson and Bill Polson. Yep, he was a starter. Tony La Russa had him in Oakland. I beg your pardon, that's right. He was in Oakland A. And then yeah, he went, went from uh, he went from the Mets to the A's in a trade that will bring a couple of familiar names. Billy Taylor was okay, a pitcher sure. that was in the Braves organization. He went along with Greg McMichael for Billy Taylor. And then after a couple of years out there, La Russa's here, and they signed him as a free agent. Tony La Russa likes players that he's familiar with. You know, no surprises. Little flare down the right field line. That's going to extend the streak for Giles and a good start to the Atlanta night. A 12 game hit streak and not surprisingly Don it's to right. Yep that's where he does his best hitting and yesterday he extended the streak because of a good inning for the Braves in the ninth and here in his final at bat probably possibly his final at bat he extends it to a career high 12 games. 
Here's Andrew Jones. Andrew is 0 for 2 in today's game, and he has clubbed Cardinal pitching, hitting 467 against the Redbirds this season. Strike one inside corner fastball. If I'm not mistaken, all three games between the Braves and St. Louis down in Atlanta were one run affairs. They were. The Braves took two of three down there. This one would be the fourth of six one run games. Isringhausen fell down. I know they're watching intently from the Cardinal dugout. I'm not sure if his landing foot caught. Dave Duncan immediately bounced up. One ball, one strike. Giles with 12 steals and 15 tries. Let's see what happens with nobody out. Hands on knees. He's going. Got a huge jump. Andrew took it. Mahoney's throw isn't even close. And that skips into center field. But Edmonds wisely backing up. No chance for an advance. So all things working well for Atlanta. Giles, a surprise party, steals it on Izzy. Andrew took a ball and is ahead in the count. Watch how far he is before Isringhausen's front foot lands. Nice little unselfish move there by Andrew to try to make the ball jump around for Mahoney, but perfect up and away pitch out there. He's not going to throw out Giles. So Isringhausen behind two balls and a strike. Braves looking to add to their one run ninth inning lead. I wouldn't expect Andrew to see much to hit. Got LaRoche, then you've got Fran Coor. A walk set up a double play for St. Louis if they can turn it. And that's exactly what happened. That wasn't intentional, but it was as close as you could come. With apologies to Derek Lee, I think you're looking at two of the top candidates for the MVP here. There's what they've done in the series. Both have had very good series. There's what they've done during the year. A slight advantage to Andrew at home runs. A pretty good size advantage to Pujols. But what have they done to help their ball club win? Those are the two categories. And I think it seems like guys who are on winning clubs, uh, that more, tr more purely defines what a most valuable player is. That's going to be an interesting year. LaRoche, two on, nobody out. Round ball, double play ball. Brunzelonic, a little trouble. And Eckstein enough on the throw to take care of LaRoche. Runner to third with two outs. That strategy worked out beautifully for St. Louis. That double play was made by Eckstein. It looked like uh, Grunzelanik was having trouble finding the handle. Like he was playing with a grenade. He wants to get it there in a hurry, but grabs a handful of glove, a little backhand shuffle. And Eckstein had to wait so long that he's looking into a 220-pounder trying to put him into left field. That's a gutty play by that little shortstop. Runner at third, two outs. And a big curveball. Frank Coor had a home run cut. And Carpenter adapted this strategy after the second inning. Started everybody off with breaking stuff. Isringhausen no differently in this matchup in the ninth. After the first inning, Frank Coor did not have a ball in the strike zone. That one ripped right center field. Will that ball get down? It will. Frank Coor rockets a ball to the wall. It's three to one. The kid comes through again. Two more extra base hits, two more RBIs, and the air is out of the balloon here in St. Louis. A good at bat for Giles. A stolen base got him in the scoring position, but okay, you want to hook him? Watch this. Not a bad pitch, but in the strike zone. Didn't get off balance. Got out in front a little bit but kept the upper part of his body back so he could handle it. Watch Tony La Russa. He was real vocal in the way Marquis pitched yesterday. He said it's a classic slump. He's made some mistakes. That clearly a mistake from Jason Isringhausen as Frank Coor went down and got a breaking ball. And they have not figured out how to pitch this kid in this series. Frank Coor, a nine game hit streak. The Braves margin now three to one with a runner at second and two outs. Into the pen again goes Tony La Russa here at Bush Stadium. Well, Ray King is coming on, but it's an interesting move. I, I, you got a guy who is your closer and one of the best in the business, and he's just given up a couple of hits, one of them a good at bat for Marcus Giles, 
and I think what you set up here, it may, it may not happen, but what you set up is the possibility of a Ray King versus Julio Franco. What you would have had would have been Isringhausen versus a 21-year-old rookie. So, uh, interesting bit of managing, but, you know, Tony La Russa has never been pushed into a mold. What also makes it interesting is McCann does a good job against left-handers. He's a 316 hitter as a rookie against southpaw pitching. Here's Ringhausen. The pitch didn't appear to be all that bad. I mean, Fran Kerr went down and got it, but it was good enough, kind of like the Farnsworth pitch to Albert Pools. Too close in that situation, and both hitters played a run. Yeah, but I, I am convinced that Tony La Russa has said to some hitters, or to some pitchers on that ball club, if you throw him a strike, you're going to suffer the wrath. Problem is he's hitting the balls that aren't strikes. But that was a strike. Right. Uh, okay. Let him go get those. If he wants to go in the left-handed batter's box and hit it, God bless him. But don't throw it in a strike zone. Well, how nice would another hit look here? It's 3-1 Atlanta. Ray King. Former Brave. Misses outside. One ball, no strikes. King's been in a bit of a slump for the Cardinals. Yeah, struggled yesterday. Two-thirds of an inning. Gave up three hits. And by his own admission, has said he has hit a couple of speed bumps. That number's grown to three with yesterday's outing. And he hits McCann. King's given up a home run in two of his last three outings and runs in his last three outings out of the Cardinal pen. And a bad start for him. First and second, two out. Way inside and on the back of the right elbow. At first, I thought it may have gotten him in the ribs or in the seat of the pants. That's all right. But hopefully that did not. <laughs> well, maybe it did get him a little harder than we thought. Badamid will turn around and hit right-handed. Keep that in mind. If somebody gets on for St. Louis, we'll know how well Ryan will be able to throw the baseball from behind the plate. Let's hope it doesn't come to that. 3-1 the score. A quick strike to Badamid, who has an eight-game hit streak that he'll take into Tuesday night's series opener against the Giants. Horacio Ramirez and Brad Hennessy at 7.30 Eastern time on Turner South. Kyle Davies and... Kevin Correa on Wednesday and John Smoltz perhaps against Jason Schmidt Thursday night. That'll be a TBS game. Blaine Boyer up. This inning going a long time. Driven down the right field line and foul. That might be the determining factor too. This could be a little poker hand though. I mean, maybe a chess match. Sometimes you'll see a manager put a guy like Julio Franco out in the on deck circle to to get the guy at bat some pitches to hit. Make you, if it comes down to a 3-2-2-0, get uh, a pitch in the strike zone for Betterment to handle. So this, this may be a, maybe a bluff. Julian Tavares up in the Cardinal pen. Reads my spot do next. One, two, the count to Betterman. What Blaine Boyer has done is thrown enough pitches to get loose, and now he's just kind of throwing and watching and you know, a couple of pitches, then he'll watch a pitch. He's going to be good. He's already good. I just think he could be good for a long time. Here comes Dave Duncan. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. And I have a feeling this is about pitch selection. One ball, two strikes. Remember, the Braves, uh, Braves and the Cardinals have hit some two-strike pitches today. A win for the Braves today would be their 100th all-time in this ballpark. Be a nice round number to wrap things up in regular season play. Braves played the first ever game in this ballpark. Back you in know 1966. What? That may have been a, a call from Tony La Russa. We've thrown too many pitches in the strike zone. I want you to throw a pitch out one and two because it wasn't really a pitch out but it was way out of the strike zone nowhere near. Either that or unintentionally intentionally walk bed of it and force the hand of Bobby Cox. He's yeah. got Franco up get Rietzma out of the game. Then and you're going to get Tavares to face Franco. And but from the Cardinals perspective you get Rietzma out although Chris has the batting gloves on. 3-2 pitch bases are loaded. Now 
Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, Reitzman's going to come on. No way is Bobby Cox going to take Reitzman down in this game. So what Tony Larusa says, I'll see. I will call your all in. And that's exactly what that was. And you heard somebody in the Braves dugout say to Chris, "Make him throw your strikes." King has had to throw three of them out of the strike zone. He might make a couple of mistakes here. I love this stuff. Oh, it's, this is what makes these two guys. I love it when the, poker, when the poker players get at it. Chris Reitzman's last at bat was 2003. Hey, put a good swing on it. Rolls to Grudzelani. And the inning is over. Braves get a big insurance run in the ninth off Jason Isringhausen. Three more outs to get for Atlanta. There's Jeff Francoeur. He's played a big role in today's ball game. The Braves with three runs, not a whole lot of hits. The first one came on a Kelly Johnson homer to right center field. Francoeur coming up leading off the second. First pitch, see ya out of here. And then the Braves get a big double from Francoeur on a curveball that wasn't supposed to be a strike, but was. You hit that to right center field. A couple of good at bats for the youngster, but ho hum, he's hitting over 400. So Jeff Francoeur, a man they call Frenchy, having himself quite a series in the heart of what was once the Louisiana Purchase. And Freddie Gonzalez would like people to know that it was indeed Freddie Gonzalez who hung that tag on him. I mean, I think there are a lot of people now wanting to take credit. But it was Freddie Gonzalez who, when he saw him a number of years ago, liked him and said, I, I'm having the Francoeur's too long. You're going to be Frenchy for me. So here we go. Last of the ninth inning. Chris Reitzma on for an inning plus save in today's game. He has gone an inning or more. Now, this is eighth time that that's happened. He has yet to give up a run in those outings for Atlanta. He has a winner, a save in 10 of his last 11 appearances out of the pen. And he's got a little more latitude here, but again, it's only a two run lead in St. Louis, who has John Mabry lurking in their dugout. He's their best left hand pinch hitter. Nunez, Taguchi, and Mahoney are coming up. One ball, two strikes. Chris was telling me it took him a while to to get into a rhythm and to figure out how to prepare to be a closer. He only throws 12, 15 pitches in the bullpen to get ready and then saves himself for here. And he's also changes his conditioning program as the year goes along. He does something interesting. Uh, he cuts back on his throwing as the year goes along and he will just kind of play catch long toss. But what he also does is like the fifth or sixth inning he'll do some running to loosen up and to get the circulation. He said that gets the rest of my body loose and after that the arm just follows right along. Know yourself. Reitzma does that. Change popped up right side out of play. That pitch I think has been the most devastating addition to his arsenal. He's thrown it with two strikes a lot and gotten a lot of hitters by surprise. Well he has he has three pitches that you could consider plus plus. Uh, excellent. Fastball is good. It's alive. He's got a, uh, you know, he's got a curveball you can lock you up with too. Up the middle, base hit for Nunez, and the tying run comes to the plate. You saw Chris do something I hate seeing relief pitchers do. He reached out with the bare hand and wisely pulled it back. Well, the Braves teach their pitchers on anything like that let it go. You've got two pretty good infielders up the middle. In all likelihood you're not going to catch it. You're going to deflect it. And if you deflect it it's going to go toward third or first with both your middle infielders converging toward the middle. Taguchi has had a good series. He's hitting the six double plays. Number seven would look nice here. Strike one. Hector Luna is on deck. He would bat for Mahoney. And Mabry lurking in the hole. He bat in the pitcher's spot, which is fourth in this bottom of the ninth. Pinch hitting not a strength of the Cardinals. They're hitting under 190 coming off the bench. They do have a good number of RBIs, 26. That's more than the Braves have, but the batting average is not as good. Oh. 
Gucci had a pretty good cut. One ball, two strikes. Milwaukee beat the Phillies 2-0. Padres beat Washington 3-0. Florida over Cincinnati 2-0. And the Dodgers beat the Pirates again 6-4. That's your National League scoreboard up to the moment. Cubs are in New York later. Houston and San Francisco. Colorado visits Arizona. Been some well-pitched ball games all around the National League. Certainly this one falls into that category. Yeah, Dontrell Willis a win. Jake Peavy a victory. Tomo Oka. Tomooka was the winner today for the Brewers. Here it's 3-1 Atlanta. 2-2. Two two. It is never easy in this ballpark against this Cardinal team. Up the middle, two hitters on, two hitters, single to center. Now the Cardinals bring the winning run to the plate. You never know which at bat. We thought in the first inning getting out Pujols might be the set the tone for the whole day. To this point it has, but how big was the at bat of Frank Coeur to get that double to right field? Taguchi just like Nunez staying back just trying to take it up the middle Hector Luna a reserve catcher hitting 243 he's two for nine as a pinch hitter so far no sign of Mabry that's a little surprising to me well Braves are thinking that Luna is going to do some bunny he took low one ball no strikes you've got Scott Sable on deck He's hit a pinch hit home run for St. Louis this year. 48 sacrifice bunts for the Cardinals. Luna not new to him. He's done. He has two of them. This one foul at the plate. One ball, one strike. Bobby Cox, barring a rainout on Tuesday, is going to manage his 3,000th game for the Braves. Tony La Russa is 11 wins away from tying Sparky Anderson for third all-time on the managerial win list. Two Hall of Famers. First ballot, I think. Yeah, easily. One in each dugout. That one bunted in the box, and he was still... In foul territory, fortunately for Luna, otherwise he'd have been out. One ball, two strikes. Jose Okendo gets the sign from Tony La Russa. Luna with the acknowledgement. Bobby Cox to the front step now. Bediment in on the grass at third. La Roche the same at first for the Braves. Double play depth up the middle. Would Luna throw a surprise party? Can he get a two-strike bunt down? If he hits into a double play, you're going to see one unhappy manager. Chris has got to throw a strike. That wasn't close enough to even offer at two and two. Unconventional, that's a word we've used for La, for La Russa a number of times. Does he put him in motion here? Well, if you don't think Luna can get the bunt down, take a chance. Taguchi can run, Nunez can run. But they're down two runs. 2-2 two, two count. Late swing. Let's see if Chris can, has sped up his bat. If this is an early August preview of October, Ain't it fun? Oh, man. A lot of stuff to talk about today. 2-2 two, two count. Off the glove of Reitzma. Giles, sweet tag, got nothing. Everybody's safe. If he lets it go, it might have been a double play. That's exactly what we were talking about before. Braves preach to their pitchers. 
if you cannot field it cleanly, don't try to grab it. To the right side of the mound, it would have been right at Giles. He had to reverse, tried to grab and tag at the same thing and that at the same time, and that is a great break. He ran way inside out of the line, but you've got to give that infielder a chance to feel the ball, so he was perfectly within his rights to do that. Here's Siebel. He jumps the first pitch, and that's pulled foul for a strike. Siebel, another one of those seemingly perpetual minor leaguers who's gotten a shot to play for the Cardinals. He's three out of 18 as a pinch hitter with a home run. One ball, one strike. You know what's scary about all this? Let's say you get a couple of outs. You still. You're getting close to you know who. Yes, you are. And again, with Eckstein due up next, he's the guy that puts the ball in play. He can find a hole. He doesn't strike out. Rodriguez. Kind of like the Cardinals dilemma against Jeff Brancourt and McCann. They don't really know how to pitch him yet. They haven't seen him much. And then Pujols is third. Right now, it's not the most comfortable position to be in. But if you're looking for a little something to feel good about, the Cardinals trailing after the eighth inning have only had one comeback win in 37 tries. One and 36. Braves will give up a run for a double play here if they can get it. They'd love a strikeout too, and they're one pitch away from that happening to Scott Siebel. Let's worry about Albert in October. Did you mention his numbers coming off the bench? Siebel? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a homer, three RBIs, yeah. three for 18 and a pinch. Little looper to third, and that retires Siebel. So now you're a ground ball away from winning the game. One out, nothing in for the Cardinals. That's a big pitch. Here's Eckstein. Well, you got good speed out at second, but one of the advantages defensively of having an Eckstein bat now is that there's a pretty good chance he's not going to hit the ball over anybody's head so you can play the outfielders in just a little bit unless in your mind you want to say okay we'll concede a bloop but we don't want an extra base hit. Base is full of Cardinals one out. Next time a little strike zone takes a ball a walk means a run. He's walked twice he's doubled he's popped to right. And Eckstein in 420 at bats hit into a team high 11 double plays. Andrew Jones is shallowed. Frank Corr is shallowed. But Johnson in left is back fairly deep. Fly ball belted left field and deep. Johnson back. It's a great slam for Eckstein. The Cardinals take one away in the bottom of the ninth inning. Four runs on four hits. Eckstein a game winning series winning Grand Slam. We were just watching was for a show called Bushwhack and that's how the Braves have to feel now. Five feet seven 160 pounds soaking wet. 
David Eckstein is our Home Depot player of the game. All kinds of thinking about what if, could you? He's led him in double plays, but he gets a hanging changeup and hits it out with plenty to spare. He's only 5-4 now after the pummeling he took at home plate. And the Cardinals get off the deck to win this one by a score of 5-3, our Home Depot player of the game. The totals look like this under the arch. Five runs, nine hits, no errors, and seven left on base for the Cardinals. Three runs, six hits, airless ball, and six left on for the Braves. The win goes to King, the loss of painful one to Reesma. Four home runs in the ball game, but it was Pujols doing the damage. You expect that. Francoeur and Johnson, they have done the damage, but David Eckstein, a painful home run, and I know especially painful for you, Chip Carey, a Florida Gator did him in. That's just below the belt, Don, but the Braves end this trip with a 3-3 three and three record, and the Cardinals and Braves head-to-head -head this season. 3-3, three and three, a possible playoff preview. Good news for Atlanta. They head home for two weeks now and maintain a five-and-a-half game lead in the National League's Eastern Division. A much-needed off day tomorrow. Then we're back in play Tuesday night on Turner South at 7.30. The Braves will take on the San Francisco Giants at Turner Field. Coming up next on Turner South, it's another exciting episode of Bushwhacked. Cardinals take it away in the ninth inning. Four runs on four hits. An X-Nine Grand Slam decides it. For my partner, Don Sutton, Glenn Diamond, and our entire crew, Chip Carey, our finale in regular season play at Bush Stadium goes the Cardinals' way, St. Louis 5, Atlanta 3. Until next time, good afternoon, everybody.